Casieco, Robinson Casieco, Caseco, whatever his name is, and Emmanuel Navarrete. I actually stayed up and watched that fight. Um, I went to bed on a Shakira Stevenson fight, and I could woke, woke up and watched it. Almost put me back to bed. Um, I mean, I ain't going to even speak on it no more. But for the most part, this was an exciting fight. Didn't see none of the undercard because I didn't watch it on ESPN+. Plus. I had, had to shoot some moves yesterday, but uh, yeah, I didn't score it, but to the naked eye, I thought Kasiako won, or Kaseko won, or Robinson, whatever his name is. I thought he won that fight to the naked eye. Um, now, it's a 12-round fight. Navarrete scored two knockdowns, so that gave him four points. So all he would need is to win two more rounds just to get a draw. So I can see why you know people say it was a draw, but I felt that Kasiako, Kaseko, whatever his name is, he dominated that fight. I thought he he dominated the duration of the fight, but I don't make up the rules. A knockdown is a point is, is two points, right? And he was giving Navarrete all type of fists. Navarrete couldn't do nothing with his movement, his feints, uh, and he was throwing some hard punches to keep Navarrete off. He fought through a lot of a uh, 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 fatigue too, you know. And I felt that Navarrete. Kept letting him off the hook, trying to head hunt and look for that uppercut. And Conseco actually, he he was a little awkward in his attacks too with his overhand or lefts and rights. And that kept Navarrete honest. That allowed Navarrete not to really get off with his looping shots like that. Because Conseco was throwing some some awkward stuff as well as well too. But you know, Navarrete would hurt him to the body and then don't go back to the body. Navarrete was trying to, you know, you know, the last, you know, 60 to 30 seconds of the round, he was trying, he had hurt him, and then he had tried to close him out, but Navarrete probably needed to come behind the jab a little bit more, attack the body, but, you know, Casiaco, whatever his name is, Caseco, Casiaco movement was just too much, and you see that guys that slick gonna give Navarrete a whole bunch of issues, but the problem is, can they deal with that pressure and that power? You know how awkward he is. You know, Robinson Caseco. You know, I'm gonna call him Caseco. He, you know, he was awkward. He was awkward. You know, he he was very awkward. I just don't see why people people can't stay in their damn lane. It's crazy. He was very very awkward. And um, straight finesse this whole shit. He he was very very awkward. And, you know, they both was awkward. And and I think that that threw off Navarrete. You know, he hurt him with some uppercuts, some body shots. I felt like he should have committed to the body a lot more. You know, you got a guy that's tired and fighting for fatigue, go, through the, go to the body, bang the drum. You know, and I felt that, you know, uh, Casiaco should have went to the damn body too. He head hunting upstairs to keep him honest, go to the body. It don't look like Navarrete did a sit up since 98. I don't know why you see Mexicans and they don't like, they got soft bodies and all that stuff and people don't go to their body. Them dudes got chins of iron usually and their conditioning is really good. So I don't understand why uh, Casiaco didn't go to that, bang that drum. And I don't know why Navarrete didn't follow up and bang that drum. But you had two aqua fighters and it made to be the best fight on the on the main card. I heard Abdullah Mason one. Shout out to him. I heard Brian Norman was in a wrestling a wrestling match. It was a terrible fight. I seen Ohio run boxing had posted a clip with his daddy said I he in this corner. He said, I don't know what to tell you. Well, it's time to go get somebody that can tell you what to tell you. These daddies want to be able to get in boxing and don't know what the hell they doing and don't want to get help and then when they get help they don't want to give the person who helping them no type of credit then they don't want to pay them when they start to get the shine you know these are these are true narcissists a lot of these pops in the, in, the, in, the, in the boxing world and a lot of these dudes really ain't qualified to be a trainer they really want to clean up boxing they should make they should make a, a, a you, you should have to qualify to be a boxer trainer you should have to pass a goddamn test and I guarantee you that it'll clean up a lot of the dumb daddy syndrome in boxing. I'm telling you.
But I, I just to the naked eye, it looked like Casiaco dominated that fight. But he got dropped two times, and I, you know, I see that I can peak two or three rounds that Navarrete won, so I can see Navarrete winning a, a decision by the point or two. And I also can see Casiaco winning by a point or two. So it was a close fight. I think a majority draw was was fitted. You know, but Casiaco fought his heart out, bro. I, I wouldn't have been mad if Casiaco would have won. I wouldn't have been mad if either or would have won. I'm a Navarrete fan. But Casiaco, Casiaco, whatever his name is, he was he was just as awkward as uh Nav damn near Nav Navarrete was, and it threw him off. And it threw him off. It threw him off. He was just as awkward, and it threw him off. It threw him off big time. You know, it threw him off big time. It threw him off big time. So, um, yeah, he landed some good shots. He hurt Navarrete here and there, but Navarrete hurt him more. And that, that might have been, you know, kind of like giving him rounds or whatever like that, but... It was it was a good fight, and we didn't know that was gonna be by far, by far, far, the best fight on the card. That was by far, once again, the best fight on the card. You know, and you know, I just think the movement, the slickness, that's gonna spell trouble for, for Navarrete. That's gonna spell trouble for him. That slickness, that slickness, he can't deal with. Yep. So, you know, the only way he going to deal with that is if a slick fighter get tired or they just can't deal with pressure or his awkwardness. So, if you can give him some movement and you can catch him coming in like Casiago did or keep, keep him honest, he couldn't just come through the front door because Casiago was dig, digging deep. He still was throwing some heat. They might have been arm punches, but he had to respect them. He still had to respect them arm punches. He still had to respect him. He still had to respect him. So, um, that's something to look at. Day, they got to do that again. Now, Navarrete say, you know, he want to do it again, but he don't know if the handlers and the promoter want to do it again. That might need to be the main event. That was the main event last night, to be real. Shit, that was the main event. But to the naked eye, I can make it, you know, I thought Casiaco dominated. I mean, I would say dominated. I thought he won to the naked eye, but like I said, when you get dropped twice, all he had to do was win two rounds. And I think you could find more than two rounds than Navarrete won. So, you know, there were some swing rounds in there. There were some close rounds. I thought Casiaco, he, uh, I thought he dominated, I thought he dominated the round. The entirety, the majority of the rounds, and then Navarrete would come in and steal the rounds. You know, he would let Navarrete steal him at the end. But Navarrete's biggest downfall was not going to that body sooner. You know, and Casiaco biggest downfall was not banging that Manuel Navarrete body. <laughs> Both of them failed to consistently go through the body. I think that kind of hurt them, you know, and they uh, opportunities to pull away from the fight. But Casiaco, man, he did a great job of keeping Navarrete honest. And when Navarrete came through the front door with his awkwardness, he was prepared to land something. And people forget that kid is a gold medalist. That kid's a gold medalist. You know, that kid's a gold medalist. So, I don't think anybody should should be shocked. But, 
It was that was that was that was that was the who know that knew that was gonna be the best fight. Had Shakur Stevenson and, and um and Edwin De Los Santos came on first. Everybody would have went to sleep before before they would have got a chance to see that fight. So, you know, that's what I be saying in boxing. They be pumping up these fights. They be amping up these fights, and they look good on paper. Then you get to watch the fight, and don't shit happen. And then you know it turn off a lot of fans. Shakur Stevenson lost a lot of potential fans last night. You in a prime time. You in an awkward spot. You know you have. You know, they tried to. They they kept the fight on late. Because they probably wanted the fight to go on after, after Thursday Night Football. You know, and I'm just thinking, like, damn, they got a late-ass car on Thursday. Like, that motherfuckers ain't got to get up and go to work. But, you know, I had to forget they had to wait till after Thursday Night Football. So, and, you know, Burrow got hurt, you know, so that was what it was. But, hey, thumbs up the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, and the subscribe button is the bell icon button. Hit all notifications. Increase your chance to get notifications. We go live. Or drop a video. Financially want to support the channel. Cash App, Dollar Sign, CJ Good 313. Venmo, CJ Good 313. PayPal link in the description. Hit the link tree. Find me on Twitter, Instagram, Spotify, Anchor, Cash App, Venmo, PayPal, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, the whole nine. Appreciate the love and support. Let me know what you girls and guys think in the comment section. Uh, don't forget to check out my new channel, Free Game 89, FR33 Game 89, and my Detroit channel, Motor Street Sports Talk. Both links in the description and the link tree. Peace.